because I know God knows where I am 24-7. He knows everything about me. And we should never want to use other people as personal property for our own personal profit. Boy, it's getting quiet in here, but that's the pure word of Almighty God. And now we're going to skip on and we're going to go ahead and conclude. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Christy, I'm pulling one on you now. I'm going all the way down to the end and we'll leave everything out. We'll go all the way. We'll leave out B. We'll leave out C. We'll get them next week. God's will. But we're talking about the rebuilding of the temple. And what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, which you have of God and you're not your own. Listen. Sell out and surrender. Jesus bought you on the cross. And if you're saved, you belong to him. We're bought with a price. Now watch this and watch it closely. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Don't defile the temple. Now your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22 and 23. He's put all things under his feet. And gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. May our objective always overwhelm our opposition. And our objective is to try to do the will of God and get the word of God and the gospel of Christ to every single solitary person. Now run that last slide uh, and we'll get done right now. And I want you to see this. If we're going to see things happen in Smith County and see things happen in America, here it goes. It takes the repentance of the Christian. You know what the word repentance means? It means really a change of thought and a change of behavior as a result of afterthought. It's what God speaks to me and then I mull it over in my mind and I come to complete agreement with God in His Word and in His personage within my life. So as He abhors sin, I abhor sin and I've got to repent of it. Repentance produces a 180 degree turn. I'm going east but now I'm going west. Repentance demands a change. So the repentance of the individual Christian is the only thing that will bring revival in the church. If we sit there with pride, God resists the proud but if you'll humble yourself then God will exalt you in due time and the only way I'll ever get to divine exaltation in my life is to be willing to have sincere humility in my life so repentance of the Christian will bring revival in the church and therefore as a result restoration throughout the country he will heal our land now the reality of the circumstances and we're done Let me read to you Philippians chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. Listen carefully. You can turn there if you'd like. Philippians chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. Listen to Paul as the Holy Spirit moved him. He said, I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Now listen to this. Listen carefully. Verse 21, for all seek their own. If you don't know that by now, let me rehearse that in your mind before we go. Most everybody's out for their self. Did you know that? How many knew that? Better question, how many didn't know that? (laughs) If you've lived any life at all, you know that. Most people are out for themselves. And they try to fit God into their program. And they will try to be the generator of the Word of God and say, well, this one's wrong, that one's wrong, I don't like this, I don't like that, I don't like the other. Everybody seeks their own. And we want our way. Selfishness, covetousness, all of it. Paul said, I know a... I know a couple of women named Eunice and Lois. And I know a young man named Timothy. He's different. And all you dear folks at the church at Philippi, when I was looking for somebody that would sell out and surrender to God and put you all ahead of himself, this young man Timothy has taken away from his own life to minister to me in prison. And to help me and to follow me and to be with me. 
He's been my legs when I wasn't able to walk. He's been my voice when I wasn't able to talk. He's been my strength when I was too weak to go. I'd have starved at Caesarea by the sea. If it wasn't for him sacrificing his own life to help me. God Almighty. That's why I'm calling him in the slide. Sir Timothy. He's got some integrity. He's got some sacrifice. It didn't matter to him who did it. As long as it got done. Didn't matter if he was first or last. As long as the gospel got preached. That's the spirit of God. And a young man named Timothy. In Romans 16, 1. Paul said, I commend to you, Phoebe, a servant of the church. She is something else. She followed him around the known world. She helped the church at Rome. She carried the letter to the Roman church through Ephesus, Philippi, and other places. Some of you young ladies, if you want to be like somebody, forget about Gaga. And whoever the Kardashians are, I don't have a clue and don't care. But I've read in my Bible who Phoebe it was. And if you young women want to be like somebody, you be like that one example of the power of revival in a pile of rubbish. Young men, old men, let's be like Timothy. And the very spirit of Timothy is real right here this morning. The same Holy Spirit that lives in me lived in him. And he gave himself up. And then God blessed him. And just like old Daniel, he didn't stop speaking up so the lions couldn't eat him up. (laughs) And the three Hebrews didn't bow down. So God made sure they wouldn't burn up. Are you listening this morning? If we're going to get this temple, the house of God, the church in America, and all of our bodies, then we're going to have to rebuild these temples. And may they be holy temples. That's why, I'm going to get real mean here now. Some of you ain't going to like me. But you know, I ain't making fun. I'm just being real. You know, I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, if you want to, you can overcome nicotine. I've told some of you for years, bring that cigarette pack right down here at this altar. Throw it down right there on that floor. And you stand on it in the name of Jesus. Well, I can't quit. I don't believe it. You don't want to quit. Say, preacher, you ain't never smoked one. (laughs) No, I ain't. Because God put holy fear in me back in 1969, I reckon, when Oliver, when Jack Green, Oliver B. Green's brother, was preaching at Calvary, my home church, and he made us youngins come down. Well, he didn't make, I did it for God. Went down there to altar and made a vow that I'd never touch it. And he told us that night, Bimbo, he said, if you make a vow to God publicly and break it, God will get on you bad. And there's a fear of God. I ain't putting you down for smoking. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you save a lot of money. <laughs> but I'm talking about rebuilding the temple. This temple is the, is the building of the Holy Ghost and the new creature that you became when you got saved. You don't have to put that old nicotine and plus those tobacco companies, whether it's Philip Morris or whoever it is. I'm talking about smokeless dipping too. <laughs> Woo! You have heard such preaching, yes? <laughs> I ain't going back there no more. I ain't mad at you and being mean to you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to save you some coins too. (laughs) But here's the reality. Don't choke the Holy Ghost. Now I may not smoke a cigarette, but there's other things I got to get rid of. (laughs) How about it, Runt? God's been good to me, boy. (laughs) 
Holy Ghost and Martha's been on me a long time, lose this gut. You say, now, preacher, you really are meddling. I can't got no, I'm just trying to help cigarette smokers get over it. Bring your cigarettes down here and stand on them, go out here without nicotine fit. And then I mean to tell God, Betty, I'm going to eat right. I need to lose this thing. If I'm going to give God five or six more good years around here, Larry, I need to lose this old, you know, pressing on my, all that. I know that. We've all got vices. We've all got things. If we'll be honest, we need to surrender, put it all down, and give God every single solitary thing we have. God said in Isaiah's day, I'm looking for one that'll, that'll, that'll serve me and talk for me. said in Ezekiel's day, looking for one person that'll stand in the gap and make up the hedge. And that's us. That's us. So they're talking about the rebuilding of the temple.